in sports, the scoreboard doesn't tell the full story, but Netflix does. Stories about dads who happen to be world-class quarterbacks and a battle for the heart, soul, and direction of the multi-billion dollar business of F1. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're brand new, Netflix has the stories for every type of fan. You can watch these incredible sports stories like quarterback, F1 Drive to Survive, Untold, and many more now on Netflix. Hello and welcome to a new podcast, The Paddock and the Pavilion with Stephen Wallace. In each show, Stephen will interview someone connected to the world of horse racing or cricket. Hello everyone. After chatting to Roland Butcher about England's test series against New Zealand, today I am with former England test player Catherine Leng to discuss the recent women's test against India. Welcome back to The Paddock and the Pavilion, Catherine. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the invite again. Um, I obviously didn't bore you too much last time, so um, that's all good. Hello, everyone. Well, we haven't got any electricians in today, I hope. No, uh, no, no, no electricians, but someone has been knocking a nail in next door, so I can't, I can't guarantee full uh, silence. We'll just, <laughs> just see how it goes. There's never a dull moment, is there? No, well, we had an amusing time last time because you said that... Uh, when you listen to the podcast, um, and you must have had it on quite loud, one of the dogs actually went to the door for the doorbell yes. that went on in the podcast. Yeah. Yes, I was. I was. Um, I obviously listened to it, and I had it on in the lounge. Um, and the dog, the doorbell rang on the podcast, and the dog went barking to the door. Um, and actually, uh, I'd spoken to my stepmom as well. And um, she she didn't realise, but she'd actually gone to the, her door mid podcast because she thought the bell had rung. <laughs> um, so I had to, a bit of explaining to do. So, but maybe I should unplug it. Yeah, well, let's hope that we don't get an Amazon delivery this afternoon. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Sky Sports are celebrating twenty five years of cricket on television, and I. Uh, before play started on Wednesday, I caught your your shirt on some of the early <laughs> clips. Did you see that yourself? Yeah, that um, it was great. You know, it was it was so good to watch it back. You know, it was it was brilliant of Sky to roll out a bit of the old footage. Um, yeah, I did. I did did catch uh, the back of my shirt. I think I was congratulating Claire Connor on a rather fine hat trick. She managed to. Um, get three bunnies at the end of an innings. Um, good, good captaincy putting herself on to bowl at some rabbits at the end. I'm sure the um, future <laughs> MCC president will be, be listening to those comments you just said. <laughs> they were yeah. three frontline batsmen that she dismissed <laughs> at the crucial stage of the game, weren't they? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, my mem- my memory is not as good as it used to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Right. Well, before, before we, we um, get to review the game in full, um, what an absorbing contest I and mean, a great advert for women's cricket. I just wrote a few things down that happened. We had uh, the themes. We had fast scoring. We had great catches. We had a fantastic uh, ball for, from Catherine Brunt. We had batting collapses. We had big stands. We had resilience from the Indian side. And we also had a, a 17-year-old star who, who nearly made a, a fantastic 100. Mm. Yeah, it was just something out of an Indi- Indiana Jones movie, wasn't it? Something going on uh, at all times. And um, what I really enjoyed about it was if you dissect um, the four four days, you've got a little bit of every format in there. So you've got you've got a bit of test match cricket where they um, it was. Rana and Batia needed to dig in right at the end, um, and you had uh, some fast scoring. Anya Anya Shrubso went in in the first innings and and played a bit of T Twenty cricket. So it had it had everything in it really. So um, yeah, really glad I paid my Sky subscription uh, this month. Yeah, it certainly wasn't dull. I mean, England have only actually played 96 test matches. We've, we've played by far the most, um, and 50 mm-hmm. of them have been against uh, uh, Australia. Uh, as a player and someone who's played test cricket, is it the highest honour to 
to play a test match? I, well, personally, I, I think so. I, there's nothing better than playing cricket for four days. You know, anything can happen. And what I learned in my, I think, 12 or 13 test matches that I played, that you should never give up because in the space of two minutes, uh, the opposition can have a batting collapse and you're back on top. It's, um, you know, it can be a roller coaster ride and, and that's a beauty of test cricket. Um, this this game really sort of like brought back some brilliant memories of how much I liked playing test cricket. It, it was a great advert for, for the women's game. Well, there's only been eight test matches globally since 2011 and, and India hadn't played a test match since they last played England in 2014. I know we mentioned it before on the podcast, but after this particular game, do you think there is room for more test matches? I guess there's uh, two ways to look at it, isn't isn't there? There's one for progression of the game um, to play it over all formats and the second, unfortunately, it comes down to commercial income, doesn't it? And um, currently, I don't, I don't think they get the crowds for uh, test matches, but I really feel that, you know, with the 100 starting, that's going to bring in new viewers to the game and new fans. And you just need to build up that white ball cricket in the next few years to, you know, to start start the test tests again, just building up the audiences, I think, really. It's it's a shame because it's it's a and again it's a personal opinion that I just love test cricket. Would you like to see like when uh, they're playing the Ashes, they have this one test match and then the three one days and the three T twenties brought into each touring side's visit? Yeah, that would be um that would be great. I know back in the olden days we'd we'd have three tests. Um and you know, it's very difficult to to sort of like get your mindset going from I mean, I never played 2020 cricket, but going from uh, you know, the 50 over format to a test match, you really have to, you know, knuckle down and get your head round that you might have to bat for a day. And in, and in your uh, test match where you scored your century, you did bat for a long time yourself, didn't you? Yeah, it was uh, it was a bit of a Jeff boycott um, innings, but uh, it, it's kind of like what was needed at the time. But you know, it's just so good to bat for so long. It's you know, it was an absolute privilege. And it must have been uh, different for the players in this game who are used to playing T Twenty and one one day internationals to play a game over four days yeah I mean um you know the two girls at the end like I said before uh Batia and Rana in the end they made it look easy um you know I'm not sure if either of them played test ma- in a test match before but um you bat under so much pressure in a situation like that because at one point I think they had four round the bat and Georgia Elwes who was fielding a silly mid-on was literally, she could have flicked the nose of the batter very easily. She she was so close. That must have, you know, they must have been under so much pressure and you'd never get that in, in the other formats at all. So, um, yeah, it was really impressive. But I just don't think um, batters will have batted under that sort of pressure before. Well, let's go back to Wednesday and uh, we'll start with a, with a controversial question really is, yes. What did you think to playing the game on a used pitch? It was a bit naughty, wasn't it? Uh, really. Um, I mean, as it as it panned out, they didn't. It didn't. It didn't behave too too badly. Um, but I think from a a PR point of view, it was very poor. Um, it's not really the type of publicity that Bristol would would want, um, certainly not the type of publicity the ECB would want. Um, but I think the ECB did apologise that they'd it'd been a lapse in administration. Um, but for for the for the girls, you know, turning up at Bristol and finding that out, I'd I'd have been really gutted. 
Um, but I think Heather Knight handled it fantastically. Yeah, both the, the coach, Lisa Kitely, and Heather Knight, the captain, were quite di- diplomatic, weren't they? Um, yeah. Heather said, not ideal. But, uh... <laughs> Biggest understatement of uh, 2021, I think. <laughs> I mean, it would never have happened. You, you'd never see a men's test match turn up and there'd be a, a used pitch use, would there? No. I mean, I always um, tell a little story how um, I played at Lords um, against New Zealand and it started to rain. And as quick as you like, the groundsman came on with the big hover um, cricket covers only to cover the men's wicket for the next day and then cover our our wicket with a sheet and um you know that was that was 20 years ago so seems a little bit like you know nothing's changed too much in that department well hopefully this will be a lesson and it won't happen in the future I think it's pretty certain it won't now yeah after yeah. this but it shouldn't have really I, I, I was surprised when the ECB said that and it won't happen again when I thought, well, surely you should have made sure that didn't happen this time. But. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, you know, if there's more to it or there's some background to it, but um, let's hope it won't happen again. Cause it, it's sort of like a, um, you know, it's an uncontrollable, isn't it? For, for the girls, a, you know, um, they just have to get on with it, I think. And like I said, as it, as it panned out, I don't think, uh the it was the wicket was a bit low and slow for the seamers and i don't think it really misbehaved too too much and bristol is that a good venue for the for the women's game as well yeah i think it's a fantastic venue i i I lived down there for two summers and i was privileged enough to uh train train there it's got a fantastic facilities but it's it's very personable ground um, where if you're spectating, um, you know, you feel quite close to um, to the pitch. Uh, I think I watched England, the England-Australia game in the, uh, the World Cup and it, it was a fantastic, fantastic day. Um, and it's, it's just in the middle of a uh, housing estate. It's, it's, um, it's a very odd, odd venue, but... Um, a uh, very good ground, I think, for for women's cricket. It's it's not massive. No, you could get good value for your runs with there's so many uh, wickets on the on the square. I must admit, mm. I haven't. I've been to Bristol uh, to the ground, but um, the the day I went to the ground, I was watching Elton John in a concert. Now I know he's a cricket <laughs> fan, but he wasn't actually playing cricket. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Is he a batter or bowler? <laughs> I don't know. I know he's a big cricket fan because he's he's watched England in the Ashes. But uh, returning to the um, the actual action, I never thought we'd mention Elton John in a cricket podcast. Yeah. But, um, a Trent um, Rocket man, obviously. Yeah. Um, now um, England batted, won the Heather Knight won the toss on her hundredth international in charge of England, and on the first day, England made two hundred and sixty nine for six. The England openers, um, Lauren Winfield Hill and Tammy Beaumont, um, added sixty five for the first wicket. And I was very impressed with the way they handled the, the swing, swinging ball at the start. Yeah, um, I thought uh, they were a little bit, um, a little bit edgy, um, you know, the first ten overs or so. But they settled in and did really handle it very well and played very positively. Um, you know, I think uh, Lauren Winfield Hill hit two sixes which was fantastic and, and really so I guess something like that sets sets the tone of the match, doesn't it? Um something so positive and and it was exciting to watch and yeah, it just sets the tone turn of the four days really. Yeah, Lauren got thirty five and Tammy Beaumont, who is actually the number one ODI player in the world, got sixty six. Yeah. And then Heather narrowly missed out on scoring a century, getting ninety five. Um with so few test matches, that must have been hard to take mm. when you play so few test matches. Only her eighth match in 10 years to get 95. Yeah, she must be gutted. But I'm sure, um, knowing what I know about Heather, she'd be more concerned about the team performance. Um, and, you know, they the first 
Paul Batter scored a lot of runs between them and and set up a really good score, you know, the end of day one, really. Um, obviously, with uh, Dunkley coming in and, and I think playing out of his skin a little bit, you know, uh, just for a debut, um, 74 not out, it's uh, fantastic. She didn't look nervous at all. No, and it was this. This was on day two when um, Sophia Dunkley became the first black woman to play Test cricket for England. And quite a momentous day for her and her family. Mm-hmm. Um, say, as you say, seventy-four, not out nine fours, and um, we also had the uh, fireworks from Anya Shrubsole, who got forty-seven <laughs> in thirty-three balls. How brilliant is that? Um, you know, like we said before, all formats of the game rolled into one test match so yeah a really good all-round um performance by England in the first innings I think I was surprised just looking down the scorecard um four LBW um decisions in in one inning so I don't know really what that means um maybe they you know need to play a bit straighter it just it seems a bit odd um that there were would be four in innings really. I must admit, on that subject of the LBWs, I I loved um, Ian Gould, who was the uh, DRS in charge mm. of the DRS. He was so uh, to the point. It was like, uh, okay, Catherine, move on. And we were, we, uh, he hasn't hit the bat. It, it was he was very yeah. sort of deliberate, and he, he he certainly kept things moving and let, and kept you informed on what was happening. Yeah, yeah, it was good. He he was good actually. Um, I yeah, I found him um you know, quite quite entertaining really. I think he, he said a couple of asides and things. But yeah, um it must have been fantastic for um, you know, Sue Redfern MBE to to um umpire a test match after she, you know, she's played in a few herself. I bet there were some sore legs at the end of the day for both of them. <laughs> But a highlight of the day must have been Shafali Ver- Verma's 96, only 17, hitting 13 fours and two yeah. sixes. Her timing was incredible. It it really was. It was almost nonchalant, wasn't it? It was, uh, you know, she'd make herself a bit of room and just smack it, just get her hands through it, high back lift, and just and just hit the ball. Um, it it she just didn't really seem to to have a care in the world, really. Um, it was fantastic to watch. For someone so young as well, she's got a very um, exciting future ahead of her. De- definitely. Um, hopefully she'll keep her, her feet on the ground. I think she's she's played a fair few international T20 games, but, you know, it's not really anything like playing in a test match. And she did defend as well. She didn't just try and slog everything or it wasn't even slogging to be fair um she didn't try and you know hit everything she picked she picked the ball really well well she finished up making 96 and uh, added 167 for the first wicket with mandana and um as i say she is the number one t20 player in the world oh really yeah they do well it's not surprising but after that they the indians collapsed from a 167 for no wicket and then lost five wickets for 18 runs on that uh, second day. Yeah, um, big collapse, wasn't it? It, um, it? Just a little bit of, I guess a little bit of panic sets in and they just seem to lose that focus. Um, and if you lose that focus for, you know, half an hour, you find yourself another two or three wickets down without even realising it. England just seemed to rip rip through the rest of them um, quite easily. Um, and, you know, with Heather Knight um, bowling a few as well, um, I thought, you know, she bowled really well. But the star of the show for England's bowling must have been Sophie Eccleston, who got uh, yeah. four for 88 in 26 overs. Um, she blow- bowled in the first innings, particularly with great control. It, it must have been different bowling, as we've said earlier, with people around the bat and bowling so many overs. Yeah, I, she just, um, she showed, um, you know, a lot of uh, maturity with her bowling and 
a lot of discipline um, because the last thing you want to do if you're um, bowling with four people around the bat is get one of your teammates, you know, smacked on the back or, you know, um, I just, you know, you'd say she probably thrived under that pressure, really. It was really impressive. And for someone so young as well. Yeah, yeah, just showing, um, you know, great maturity and maybe, you know, that comes from playing um, up at Lancashire, you know, against um, against some of the county boys, you know, and probably just getting a lot of bowling practice, um, you know, in games. Well, India were bowled out for 231. Uh, at one stage, they lost... They went down to 197 for eight, losing eight wickets for 30 runs. Um, And then we had one of the balls, even now, of the summer from Catherine Brunt when she basically just flicked off the top of off stump. Yeah, when when I saw it, I thought uh, the keeper dropped it. What are they cheering at? And then noticed it had just nicked the bail, hadn't it? And, oh, what a ball. yeah, ball of the century, I think. It was uh, fabulous. Good to see. Well, England have fought, enforced the follow-on. Uh, India, uh, 165 deficit. Did you think England would then bowl them out? I, re- I really did after, you know, seeing the craziness of that little collapse that they had. Um, yeah, I, th- I thought, I did think we got this in the bag. Um, which, you know, like I said earlier, you you shouldn't, you know, you should never give up. So, you know, India didn't, did they? They didn't, they didn't give up. Um, So, yeah, I I thought we'd, we'd played really well up till that point to enforce a follow on. I mean, they were helped India by the um, rain affected third day and the third day, the close of 83 for one. And, uh, Again, we saw Verma show her skills, timing the ball delightfully on the square off the back foot and also hitting down the ground. Yeah, um, again, showed a bit of class really, didn't she? Um, You know, getting another uh, good score in when, you know, she could have been hugely disappointed with her 96, but she went in there and probably was in the mindset, I'm going to get my 100 this time, or you'd hope so. But yeah, some some great batting. And on the early part of day four, then she was dismissed for 63 with this um, fantastic catch by Catherine Brunt. She might have misjudged it to start with, but in the end, it yeah. was a full-length diving catch at long on. Oh, that must have hurt. So poor old uh, Brunty, she's getting on a bit now, isn't she? I'm pretty sure she... She must have hurt that that night, um, but yeah, what an absolutely stunning catch that was, you know. And it, it something when a teammate does that, it really lifts your spirits. It's you know, um, it, it's it's tough playing for four day cricket. It's it's mentally tiring. It's physically tiring, and there are events like that can just lift a team. Um, fantastically so yeah I really enjoyed watching that and the celebration after she was really pumped up well you mentioned her age yet there and um, Catherine Brunt has actually played 13 test matches and she made her debut in 2004 so and you you mentioned yourself and you actually played 12 matches so have you played 12 in in eight years it just shows you how few test matches England play or anyone plays actually yeah, it's, you know, like we said before, it's just, it, it, it's a shame. And she, you know, she's an excellent candidate for playing in a test match. You know, she bowls and she can bat as well. Um, you know, she's good in the field. So, well, at lunch, at lunch, India were 171 71 for three with a lead of six. And by T, they were 243 for eight with a lead still then of only 78. You must have thought then that England would take those two wickets and and win yeah. the game. They re- they really looked like they were on a roll and they were going to take those two wickets. I really thought they were going to take them um, because I stopped 
Um, I stopped all my housework because <laughs> I didn't want to miss the two wickets. And then, you know, time was ticking. Um, I thought I'm going to have to get this done now. So, um, yeah, I had to get on with my housework. Thank, thanks, girls. Um, but I just thought those two, the two Indian girls, just batted very, very well. And I don't, I don't, I think in a situation like that, when you, a wicket matters, I think you've got to just really mix your bowlers and you've got to put people on that don't normally bowl, you know, which will massively vary the line and length and, and knock the batter's concentration a little bit. And I think um, giving Dunkley just one over in the whole test match uh, was unfair. I thought just just give her a spell of five and five or six overs to get you know to break that partnership even even if she goes you know I've forgotten how how much she went in her first over I think it was about nine or ten but you know as a leggy and it was cold you're just warming up a little bit after you know your third over um so I thought it was it you know, they could have given Dunkley a bit of a a go to um, to sort of like mix it about a bit. Yeah, because Sophie, Sophie Eccleston finished up bowling thirty eight overs in the <laughs> second innings, and and on the TV they actually remarked that she her, her sort of length was 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 struggling a bit at the end, and she obviously was tired. She bowled over sixty overs. She she got eight wickets yeah. in the match, so she did fantastically well. Yeah, yeah, she. I'm you. You're going to be very very tired after that especially if you're not used to bowling that much um you know they've they've taken out uh obviously they're restricted to bowl 10 overs in 50 over matches there's no timed cricket anymore you know it used to be back in the days of the Bradford League you'd have one one bowler bowling 20 25 overs down one end um but you just you just don't get that in today's format, which is a shame. But the poor girl, yeah, must have been very, very tired. Um, and like I said, I just think they should have mixed it mixed it up a bit more, the bowling changes, to try and force an error. Well, India finished on 344 for eight in 121 overs. Uh, so the match ended in a draw. There's been some talk in the papers about should the game have been played over five days but is that then would that then affect the sort of pace of the game if you stretch it even further I mean we just had rain on day three that yeah affected the match really it was just it, it, oh, the weather it was just unfortunate and you know I'd like to say we probably would have won if that hadn't have happened but by all means yeah um I guess it's a, a cost thing and it's never been considered before but this brings it to the forefront now doesn't it make if you're going to have women's test matches make them five days uh, right. make it the same as the men's yeah. um but I guess it's that old old excuse of you know it's not really financially viable and the other thing I was just about the game that um I noticed that I don't know whether this, this has been done regularly by Amy Jones, but she wasn't wearing wicket keeping pads. She was wearing shin guards keeping wicket. Is that is that something that's unusual or is that a sign of things to come? Are we going to see the England Test wicket keeper doing that in the men's game? Um I'm I mean I'm not I'm not sure. Um I think it stems back to Sarah Taylor, um, her keeping days. She started the trend and it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? really to you know it must be much more comfortable wearing sort of like shin shin guards and wearing you know the the wicket keeping pads but she had a really nasty crack on the knee um you know I sort of felt a pain on that one it's sort of like a one of those strikes that makes you feel a little bit sick (laughs) um so um she must have been very sore after that she showed, She didn't really show any pain afterwards either. So she must be quite tough, I think. Probably makes you more mobile, I suppose, without the pads, isn't it? Yeah. 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 A lot a lot easier. 
So what are your final thoughts on on this test match? Um, I think uh, it was it was just a fantastic advert uh, for women's cricket um, and an absolute delight to watch. And I wish I could have watched more of it, um, you know, sort of uh, in the flesh at Bristol. Um, but unfortunately, it's not meant to be, um, you know. Um, but yeah, congr- congratulations to both teams. I think they, they played tremendously well. There's a lot of highlights to take out of it. But more importantly, you, got, you did finish the housework on Saturday. I did, yes. <laughs> I'm sure Heather Knight will be pleased about that, that you got the yeah. right? <laughs> I would have loved to, uh, yeah, to have sat and watched more, but needs must. <laughs> and now the sides move on to three uh, uh, 50 over games and three T20s. How do you think those those matches will go? Yeah, I just think um, there's a real positive vibe about it, um, you know, after a test showcase, really. So, they're going to be some really good games. I mean, you know, um, we, we, we're we forgetting Matali Raj in, in this test match. I mean, I was looking forward to watching her back because she, you know, she's so uh, graceful. Um, I think, you know, we've got a bit more to see from Matali Raj. And there's a lot of players who are on form. So, um, you know, it stands, stands in good stead too to have a um, a good series. Yeah, because India got to the final of the uh, T20 World Cup and also got to the final of the 50 over World Cup in yeah. England. And as you say, Mitali Raj, I was checking her record, she's got a test average of, of I think, 44 and her one-day average is over 50. Yeah, I just, she's she's fabulous. I watched her bat for, I don't know how long, at Taunton. Um, I think in a it might have been two thousand two, two thousand three, and we just we just couldn't get her out. She wasn't going anywhere, and she batted in thirty degrees in a in a long sleeve heavy knit jumper the whole time. Amazing. Well, hopefully she'll be entertaining the crowds in the in the uh, one in the white ball game, and it's a big year yeah. for women's cricket because we've also got the women playing in the hundred and at the same time as the men are playing in the hundred as well. Yeah, I. That's so exciting. There's a there's a real buzz about it, um, and I just it's just going to be brilliant. Um, you know, hopefully, should be able to get to to some of the games and you know, be part of the history of 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 the game. Really, um, yeah, it's exciting. Well, that all starts on July the twenty first. Yeah, and. I only found out through watching the test match that Shafali Verma is also going to be playing for the Birmingham Phoenix in in the uh, the hundred. Yeah, which is a great signing, isn't it, for them? Um, they must be really chuffed that that they've um, you know got got such a good batter who's on on form. Um, so yeah, it should it should be should be a good show. Well, she should be someone to look out for. Yeah, I'll maybe sit um, a few rows back just in case she smacks one a bit hard into into the crowd. Well, they're going to get be playing on the the the, the big ground, the Test grounds, you know, Lords, the Oval, Old Trafford. Yeah. So it's going to be a big spectacle for women's sport, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it would be great. Just as long as she doesn't hit my pint or anything. Oh, that's the most important, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you again for joining me on the paddock and the pavilion. We must do this again for some some women's cricket uh, during the summer. Yeah, ho- hopefully we get some um, some good feedback and uh, hopefully people enjoy it, um, you know, for what it is. And um, yeah, thank you for inviting me again. Well, thank you. And good. no, and no horse racing either. So that's two out of two. Thank you for that. Thank you very much, Catherine. <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening to The Paddock and The Pavilion. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and now on Instagram at The Pad and Pav. Don't forget, if you like the show, please do leave us a rating and review. Sports Social Podcast Network.
With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.